Hey guys, so I'm not one to really switch up my workflow or plugins and tools that I use very often. I like to work fast. I don't really like having to learn new tools and workflows, but there are some plugins that I did use for many years and then have stopped using. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you what those are and what I've replaced them with. Now, if you've been watching or following me for a long time, or if you're inside one of my pro level courses, then this will be even more interesting to you because you'll have seen me use all of these other plugins before. So let's dive in. Uh, the first plugin that I've stopped using is the Lo-Fi plugin that's included in Pro Tools. Now this used to be my secret weapon on snare drums. So I'll show you what I used to do in the mix, just on this snare track here. All I would do is use the distortion knob on Lo-Fi and you only need a little bit of it. And what that would do is just kind of saturate a little bit, but, but mostly like distort and, and clip the snare a little bit in a way that I really liked. Now, what have I replaced this with? Actually, my own plugin. So full disclaimer in this video, not on every case, but in some cases you're gonna see that I've actually replaced another plugin with one that I've created for myself. It's not meant to be a shameless plug of my plugins, although I'm happy if you wanna go and check them out. Um, but really it's more just kind of just to show you why I created these plugins and why I think they're an improvement. Anyways, Escalator is what I created in place of Lo-Fi. So the inspiration for Escalator was lo-fi and I wanted to create a plugin that other people could use, you know, all my students and everything who are watching me using lo-fi on snares and every single mix, they're like, they're using other DAWs. So they don't have this plugin that comes with Pro Tools. So like, what should I use instead? And there were some substitutes, but there wasn't like a really close substitute. So I decided to try and create one called Escalator and, you know, have the opportunity to fine tune the saturation and the processing a little bit. And even though this has replaced lo-fi on snare, the reason I love this plugin even more is because I use it like in a lot of other places in the mix where lo-fi, I literally only used it on snare. I didn't use it on anything else pretty much. Um, but Escalator is a lot more versatile. So let me just show you Escalator compared to lo-fi. This is lo-fi. Here's Escalator. So here it's, it's slamming and clipping a little bit more than lo-fi was, and it's a little smoother. And you also have more range. Like on lo-fi, it was literally like you have from zero until like maybe 1.5 <laughs> um, where it's usable. Whereas Escalator, um, there's a lot more subtlety in the range, you know, from zero to 100. But achieves the same thing that I wanted on snare. And I, I also use it on other places like kick drum. So something that Escalator does that Lo-Fi doesn't do is at the lower settings, it fattens up the low mids in a really nice way. That's kind of like if you've seen some of my other videos, you see me use like Cranesong, Phoenix, or Tapehead, or Decapitator. Escalator is kind of like in between Phoenix, which is very subtle, and Decapitator, which is, is more extreme, right? So let's check this out on kick. Very subtle, you might need headphones, but it's just adding a little more fatness to the low mids there. And I also love it on bass. Just gain match it here. It's useful on bass, sometimes on guitars as well. And I use it on vocals a lot now too, which again, it never intended to create a plugin to, to use as a replacement for lo-fi that would end up in all these other places in the mix, but it's kind of a happy accident. He got a mouthful of words for everyone else. Making love. This excites it, adds a little more energy. So next one, I've recently stopped using my go-to de-esser, which was the R de-esser from Waves, and I've replaced it with actually just a newer Waves plugin called Sibilance. And I actually didn't even know this thing existed. I think I was just looking through my plugin list one day and just, happened to see it and I thought well, it was sibilance like what's that and I tried it out and man it's just it does a great job and it's really simple and quick to set up um, often I'll just like throw it on with the default settings so let me show you what I used to do with our DSer. typically start with female DS wide you got a mouthful of words for everyone else making letters work in your defense it's like you wrote them 
something like that. I mean, that's fine. But I find myself like often having to kind of dial in the frequency and find where the S's are. Whereas sibilance, you kind of just open it up and right away it, it kind of does the work for you. You got a mouthful of words for like you're not there's no control to find like where is the frequencies that it's needs to attenuate. It kind of does that work behind the scenes. You got a mouthful of words for everyone else. Making letters work in your defense. It's like you wrote them. You got a mouthful of words for everyone else. Making letters work in. Sipa controls threshold. You can just dial in the range, like how much DSing you actually want to happen. I find this just very quick and just a slight workflow improvement over RDSer. So I've been a fan of Sibilance for a while now. All right, the next plugin that I've stopped using and replaced is another one from Waves. And nothing against Waves plugins. I still use a ton of their plugins all the time in every mix. But Rbase is one that I have stopped using. So Rbase is like a bass frequency enhancer, harmonic generator, and typically I would use it on naturally bass tracks something like this you got a mouthful of words for everyone else making letters just generate some extra harmonics to help bass sound a little fatter and bigger on smaller speakers now what's replaced that is actually one of the black salt audio plugins called low control and this actually does two jobs i used to use our bass and then wave c4 to control the low end in like a multi-band compression fashion and now low control actually does both of these things and I think it does both of them better. So let's check this out. So this plugin compresses the low end. In this case, everything below 90 Hertz, it's compressing. And then I can use this knob to turn that frequency range up or down. But for what we're talking about here, the part that's been replaced is the frequency enhancer, which again, does a similar thing to our base, obviously slightly different processing and algorithm and everything. And I actually think it does a better job of it. You can really hear how that's just making the bass sound a little bigger, a little fatter. Useful on kicks as well. So that's the next one that's been replaced. Our bass has now become low control. And the last one I wanna talk about is actually not any specific plugin, but it's related to clipping. So I've tried a bunch of different clippers. I'm not gonna name them all here, but never really loved any of them. And so we decided to create my own clipper called BSA Clipper. Here it is. So I published a video a little while ago called The Secret to Louder Mixes, and it gives a more full walkthrough of what clipping is used for in the mix, why would you why you would use it, and a little more of an in-depth demo of this plugin, but I mean, there's only two controls, just gain and ceiling. Um, so it's great on drums. You really wanna nail down the keys in a nice uh, transparent way like that. Super useful, mostly on percussive instruments. You wouldn't really use it anywhere else, but great plugin, does the job in just a simple way with clear and easy metering, which is what I always wanted from a clipper. So there you go, little 2022 workflow update with some plugins that you may have seen me use a bunch in my courses and other videos that I've actually replaced with these other plugins now. So if you wanna check out those Black Salt Audio plugins, there's a link in the description there, just go to blacksaltaudio.com. It's a plugin company I started to create the plugins that I wanted to simplify my workflow and get me to the sounds that I wanted easier and quicker. And if you wanna see some plugins that have not changed over the past 10 years or over 10 years, plugins that I'm still using, then check out the video up on the end screen here. Otherwise, see you in the next one.